So today we're going to be generating 3D terrain from almost anywhere in the world. And we're going to be doing it completely free using Google Maps and an awesome new add-on developed for Blender. So what this actually allows you to do is select any portion of the map and generate a texture using Google's satellite imagery, as well as a height map using NASA's elevation data provided online to create these 3D terrain meshes right inside of Blender. So you can do all kinds of cool things with these then, like 3D print them or use them in the background of your scenes as mountains or something. All kinds of cool possibilities. It's a ton of fun to play around with. So let's not waste any more time, guys, and let's see how you can use this add-on. So before we can get started, you're gonna to need to download the add-on following the link in the description to go to the GitHub page for the Blender GIS add-on. Here you can see the awesome developer already has some documentation and a few examples of how to use the add-on, and you can download the add-on from this location by choosing the clone or download option and then dropping it down and clicking download zip. So while that's downloading then, I'd like to quick give a big thanks to this video sponsor, Skillshare. It's a brand new year guys with 2020 and what better of a time to learn a new skill than right now? Because why not? Learning new skills is a ton of fun. And with Skillshare, you can learn basically anything you can think of by choosing from thousands of unique courses all taught by professionals. I was just watching one of Skillshare's courses on how to create great looking websites earlier today and learn some useful tips and tricks. You can start using Skillshare free today by using my sign up link in the description below and the first 500 viewers to use that link will get two free months of Skillshare Premium. After that it costs less than $10 a month so as you can tell there's never been a better time to start learning a new skill. Now that the add-on is downloaded we need to install it inside of Blender so I'm just going to go edit preferences and over along the sidebar we're going to choose add-ons and then along the top right of the page you can click install and here you're just going to locate where you downloaded the Blender GIS master add-on choose the zip file that you downloaded and click install add-on. And here you can see it's now installed. We just need to check that checkbox to make sure that it's enabled now. And then in the dropdown, you can see we have a few different settings here. The only one we really need to worry about is the cache output folder here. So for this, I'm just going to make a new folder next to my blend file. I'll name it something like cache and I'll choose that as the output folder. Then once you're still in the add-on preferences, you might as well enable the Node Wrangler add-on because that's going to help our workflow a little bit later on in the video. So go ahead and check the Node Wrangler add-on and enable that as well. So here you can see now along the top bar, we have a GIS dropdown. And if we go to Web Geodata, you can choose a base map. From here, we can choose a source, either Google or OpenStreetMap or Bing. I'm going to choose Google, but Bing will also give you some interesting satellite data. And then for the layer, of course, we are choosing satellite instead of map. So make sure you have satellite selected. And then once you click OK, you basically open up a Google Maps viewer straight inside of Blender. And this is really cool because you can basically explore the world here inside of Blender and pick any location in the world that you want to use for your 3D terrain map. And if you have a specific location in mind, like I do, you can search right inside of Blender here too by hitting the G key and then typing out the location you want to search for. In this case, I have a mountain that I want to use for my 3D terrain. So I'm typing in Mount Wilder and then I can choose a zoom level for how close I want to be in on the map. I'm going to choose 15 for this and then you can click OK and it will zoom it right into that location that you searched for. Here you can see we have some really cool terrain. This is a location near Washington, I believe, where we just have some really cool kind of mountain peaks, mountain ridges, and some cruel rivers and creeks running around. I'm going to pick a section down towards the bottom and to the left a little bit of this location where we have a river running across our scene with some mountains along the one side and hills along the other. So you're just going to line up the exact location you want inside of Blender using the middle mouse button and then hit E and this will create a 3D plane with that texture already mapped on top of it. So that is really cool and a huge time saver right there. But the magic now happens in the next step here because now we can go GIS again, Web Geodata and choose Get SRTM to get the elevation data straight from NASA for this specific location. So you click that, you wait a few seconds as it loads in this data. And as you can see here, we now have the 3D elevation from that location on our object. You can see it's added as a displacement modifier here. And you can tweak the strength if you want to exaggerate the height of the mountains even more. But how cool is that? You already have a 3D terrain with an actual location and the actual height data from that location straight inside of Blender. Now we can increase the quality a little bit of like the shadows on this mesh as it's pretty low res by tapping into edit mode and subdividing it a few times. 
You can see this does give us sort of a jagged effect though on our mesh, and we can clean this up by clicking the little texture button there on the displacement modifier. This will bring up the texture window, and then you're just gonna scroll down under sampling. You're gonna choose interpolation. This will kind of just smooth out those ridges and give you the higher quality shadows still with the cleaner mesh. So now we can jump back to the modifiers tab and apply the subsurf modifier and then the displacement modifier second. And you can see we have our terrain here as a mesh ready to be modified. I'm gonna give it a little bit of thickness. So I'm gonna tab into edit mode and extrude everything down along the Z axis. Here, I'm just gonna scale it along the Z axis again to create a flat bottom. You might wanna bring up your search menu with F3 and search for recalculate normals at this point in case something got messed up there. But there's our chunk of earth and I'm just gonna open up an HDR environment texture here in the world settings to see what it looks like rendered now. I'll link to some HDRs in the description below, but you can see being rendered here in cycles, we have our terrain and it already looks pretty fantastic. In the render settings, you can choose a higher contrast under color management, and then under film, you can also choose transparent, just to kind of get rid of the background image and only have the lighting data. So here I'm gonna split my window so we can bring up a shader editor and do a little bit of material tweaks on this mesh just to make it look a little bit cooler even yet. So what I'm gonna start off by doing is adding a little bit of bump mapping to our satellite image here by adding a vector bump node, connecting the color output to the height data on this bump node. And then I'm gonna to wanna to scale down our mesh because it's imported at a crazy high scale. And so my settings just make a little bit more sense if I scale it down a little bit. So I'm gonna scale it to about a 0.25 to make it a bit more manageable to work with. And then I'm gonna connect the bump normal output to the normal output on our principled shader. And as you can see, the effect is very subtle. So I'm gonna tweak the strength and distance perimeters on this bump node, giving me about a three on both of them, but you guys can play around with it. And I found this gave it just a bit more detail with some texture across those trees and stuff, making it seem a little bit larger in scale and just adding a little bit to the effect. Now, another method I used for adding a little bit of definition to these mountains is by adding in an ambient inclusion node here and cranking up the distance value to something much higher. We're gonna to go to about a 25 or even higher depending on your mesh. And as you can see right now, it just looks like white, but we're gonna add in a converter math node, change it to power, and we can use this node now to kind of amplify the effect of the ambient occlusion node. So cranking this up to 25.2, you can start seeing we get some black in the crevices of our mesh. And you might wanna play around with the distance to get more or less of this effect. Then you can go shift A and add in a color mix node, drop it right into your color output there. Here we're just gonna change it to multiply and then drop our power node into the bottom socket there. And as you can see, if I go to our shader here, and here I exaggerated the effect a bit just so you guys can see the effects that it's having, but with and without it, you can see that it just adds a little bit of definition to your terrain, it kind of makes the mountains stand out a little bit better. You're also gonna to wanna to take the specularity way down on your principled shader node, something like a 0.1, because the mountains shouldn't be super shiny. And then you're left with a nice looking material on your 3D terrain. Now here's how you can quickly add a dirt material to the sides of your terrain by adding in a new material here, selecting the principled shader and going Control Shift T. This will allow you to import an entire PBR material using the Node Wrangler add-on. I'll link to the material I used below, but you're just gonna select all the textures and import them. And you can see right off the bat, we have all of the textures imported right into Blender here. Then we'll just want to assign this material to the edges of the terrain here. So I'm gonna choose face select mode while in edit mode by clicking the little option along the top bar there or hitting number pad three on your keyboard and then alt right clicking to select that edge loop around the sides and click assign with that dirt material. You wanna go U, Smart UV Project as well to kind of unwrap that real quick and easy. And this will allow you to project that dirt texture on the edges of our terrain. Here I can just increase the scale on the mapping node on all three perimeters to tile that even more across our terrain. And then I'm gonna add in a color hue saturation node real quick to tweak the colors of this dirt material bring the value down to like a 0.4 and the saturation down to like a 0.5. Then I have a quick tip for you guys here on how to add some different layers of dirt to that material. And by doing this, we're just gonna add in a texture gradient texture node and we're gonna connect it up with a color ramp. So add in a converter color ramp node. Then you can just select a gradient texture and go control T to add in a mapping node with that using the node Wrangler add-on there. And as you can see, the color ramp now has that gradient texture, but it's along the horizontal axis and we wanna rotate that. So on the mapping node under the Y rotation, just type in 90 and that flips it to be vertical, just like we want for this material. And then in the color ramp node here, we're just gonna create a few different layers of dirt throughout the color ramp. So I'm just control clicking 
on our color ramp there, picking a few different colors, some kind of clay-like colors, maybe some sand-like colors, just kind of giving you different layers of dirt there across the terrain. As you can see, that looks kind of cool. And now I can just add in a color mix node, drop it right into the color texture there. We're gonna change the mix value over to overlay, connecting our color to the bottom socket here and cranking it up to a factor of one, you can see, and that just kind of looks like different layers of earth that made it look a little bit cooler for our renders. But there you have it guys, after not much work at all, we have a 3D terrain from an actual location in the world right inside of Blender, and this can be used for all sorts of different things. So huge kudos to the developer that made this add-on and then provided it for free for everyone. It's a really cool add-on, one of the coolest ones I've used in Blender. And as you can see, you can create some really cool results using this add-on. But that's not even all of it. I have a bonus tip for you guys. This add-on can do even more, we can import the OpenStreetMap building data straight from Google. So to do that, I'm just importing a new map here. I'm gonna search for a location where I know there's some building data, like New York, for example, but a lot of the more populated cities will have this actual building data. Here, I'm just picking a little corner of New York that has some buildings in the satellite image, as you can see here. I'm gonna hit E to bring that right into Blender. I might as well go ahead and import the height map data for this as well, because we can, and it's super easy, so why not? Here you can see there's not a whole lot of elevation to New York City, it's relatively flat, but we do have that extra data added. And now what we can do is go to the GIS add-on one more time, the web geo data, and this time choose get OSM for OpenStreetMap data. And here you can see we have all kinds of different options for importing buildings, highways, railways, all sorts of data. And we can just select all of it by holding shift and then clicking through all of them. Also, you want to choose elevation from object. So it takes in mind the elevation that the geometry has here. Then you just click OK. You might have to wait a few minutes here as it fetches all of that OpenStreetMap data. But there you can see we have it. We just imported a whole bunch of city data straight from Google's OpenStreetMap data right inside of Blender. So we have all of these different buildings in the exact right locations. So with this data, you can obviously create all kinds of cool things like some city renders and whatnot. And actually, if you want a new video on using this add-on for creating some city renders inside of Blender, let me know with a like on the video. and Maybe I'll just make that happen. If you guys do create something cool using this add-on, I'd love to see your finished results. So go ahead and share them in the comment section below or send them to me on Instagram or Twitter. My links are in the description. And again, I'd like to give a big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video you guys can get two free months of skillshare with that link in the description below and start learning a new skill now in 2020 but that's gonna do it for me guys thanks so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you all in a future video bye bye